Your early years pupils might be small in stature, but that can't be said of the three early years resources we're evaluating today on Resource Review. They are a set of giant building blocks, a wooden bike without pedals, and an enormous activity tray for messy play. Recommending today's resources is Julian Grenier, Head of Centre at Kate Greenaway Nursery School and Children's Centre in North London. Joining Julian on the panel is Dr Christine Taylor, Lead Inspector for Early Years Foundation Stage, London Borough of Sutton. And we also have Keith Fox, Head Teacher of St John's Walworth C of E Primary School in Southwark and an experienced Early Years teacher himself. Now we also have our resource reporter Matthew Tosh who's out and about seeing how our resources fare in the classroom. Now Julian, tell us about your first resource which is here in front of us, these wooden unit blocks. What is it about them that you like for early years? Well, um, I think maybe one of the first things to say about the blocks is just how, how beautifully made they are and how lovely to hold. They offer um, an inexhaustible range of opportunities for children to build. Right. It's completely about children using their imagination to create structures. So they're giving children a very hands-on experience of shape, size, number, all sorts of mathematical ideas through the very careful design um, of, of, of the blocks. They're made from, 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 from maple wood, they're very, very durable. We have a set of blocks at Kate Greenaway that must be a good 30 years old right. and is still in daily use by the, by the children. So this is a resource you'll still be having children using it kind of decades to come. Thank you. Well, we sent Matthew Tosh up to Bemerton Children's Centre in North London to see what Sabjit Dariwell and her early years group were building with their unit blocks. One of the earliest memories I have as a child is building things with blocks, but they weren't as big as these, these are the wooden unit blocks. And there's all sorts of different shapes and sizes, they're designed to fit together mathematically, and there's some unusual shapes as well. So I'm interested to see how Bemerton Children's Centre are using them. Well, if we can just talk, because the kids are busy uh, playing, um, how are the blocks being used today? This morning I observed the children building, building and balancing, and actually using different shapes and experimenting with how they could make them balance. So are there other skills that the children will develop rather than just building things by using these blocks? This term we're focusing on um, personal, social and emotional skills, and all the time that is going on in the blocks. They're having to negotiate with each other, collaborate with each other. And what's wonderful, that the blocks enable the children to really, really work together. What about health and safety? Everything in the nursery could be seen as a hazard. And it's important for the children to, to learn about the properties of, of the blocks. Um, and what we may do to develop the play is actually look at them wearing hard hats. Because in, in real life, builders wear you know, hard hats, it's a health and safety issue. What do you think the best things are about the blocks? <laughs> Probably durability. I mean, they're very, very strong. And it's all the different shapes and sizes that you can get that develops their play. The curves, the edges, the points. And what's wonderful is that each and every child and every adult will find one way of balancing which is different to everybody else. They're not cheap. Do you think they represent good value for money? Oh, absolutely. They last a lifetime. Um, and it's the, it's the potential for learning. I mean, the blocks themselves are quite abstract, if, if you think about it. But for the children, they're fantastic. And in terms of child development, this is what children need. So, some constructive comments here, and now I'll hand you back to our panel.
Julian, in the film we saw such a large set of these blocks in use. How many do you really need? Because presumably, I mean, the more you buy, the more money that you mm -hmm. need for the investment. So what would you say? I'm, I'm going to avoid putting an exact figure on this, but what, what I will say is that what we found at Kate Greenaway is that the more blocks you have, the more quality of the play. Christine, what do you think of this as a resource? I think they're a fabulous resource. Um, what I feel is that it's an ideal sort of opportunity through using sort of the, bl the block play for children to sort of work cooperatively, to work together, to actually experiment, um, to actually be sort of creative and to tell stories using blocks as a focus. Mm. Um, and also to promote sort of self children's self-esteem, which is really important in the early years. Keith, what do you think of them? I think they're excellent. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the shapes are lovely. The, the arches, I think, are unusual in this set. You tend not to see those sorts of arches in other sets. And they're fantastic for developing logical thought, yeah. working out what does balance on top of, mm. you know, a round shape or a, a flat shape or whatever. So it's got everything going for it. Yeah. It isn't cheap but you have got them for 20, 30 years. Another thing I'd say about the blocks here is that it's very common in nursery or reception classes to see a lot of construction kits. And I think we, what we've found is that you don't really need all of that stuff. So that although the unit blocks are expensive, you know, you, you're offsetting it against the high cost of lots of those other kits. Well, thank you all very much. Time now to move on to Julian's second choice of resource, which is down here at the front, the Like a Bike. Okay. Julian, tell us about this one. Okay, well this, this, this I am very keen on as well. I mean, I, I am a cyclist myself. And I must say, when they arrived, there was a lot of scepticism about how these were going to work in nursery. Were they going to break because they're made out of wood? Were any children actually going to be able to ride on them? Um, so, I mean, look, looking at them, there's actually two types of bike. There's this one here, which has got um, a, a pneumatic tyre. And there's another version, which is slightly bigger than this, which just has a solid wood tyre with a rubber rim. Now, what do you think the key benefits of, of this are over other wheeled toys? First of all, compared to a traditional metal three-wheeled trike in a nursery, this is much more physically challenging to children in the sense that they have to learn to balance on this. But because it's small, they can learn that balance quite gradually. So they're really gaining a lot in terms of balance, agility, coordination. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Well, to coin a phrase, Matthew, on your bike and pedal over to Goodinge Early Years Centre to see how Sunny Skullfield and her cyclists are getting on. They say you never forget how to ride a bike, but I think the learning process is actually quite tough. It certainly took me ages to master pedals and no stabilisers. So I'm intrigued to see how the Early Years students get on here with the Like a Bike. Oh, hang on, hang on. Where you are? Get set. Go! 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 So, how are you using the bikes today? Well, we started off um, by letting the children look at them and talk about them, and then they just experimented for the first few moments. And we observed the children using the bikes because we wanted to see how they manage them by themselves without any interaction from the adults. And what age group are we looking at here? They're aged three to five years here in the nursery. I think they're coping extremely well. I was a bit concerned myself, but I'm very surprised at how well they've managed the bikes and they can balance really well with them, so we're really pleased. Now, you've mentioned they're not like normal bikes, they haven't got pedals, for example. So is there a particular advantage to using these bikes? I believe so, because um, there's not there's progression, yes, from a three-wheeler bike to a two-wheeler bike, but this is um, letting the children experiment with balancing and using both their feet to help them balance before they progress to the two-wheeler bike, so I think that is a big advantage. What about health and safety? Because you know, children might fall off on the bikes. Do you have any concerns over that? Uh, well, we discussed beforehand, um, you know, making sure that we have enough adult ratio, one to, one to two at first, but then we realised that the children were able to manage the, children, um, the bikes fine. So. Do you feel that the bikes are robust? Yes, they are, and because they're so lightweight, the children can manage them very easily, which makes that very good for the children too. Do you feel that these bikes represent good value for money? I think so, um, because you'd only need maybe four or five bikes for a class of 30. And so your overall impressions? Well, the children really enjoy themselves with the bikes, so that's the main priority for us, but also it lends um, the development of many areas of the curriculum, so we're pleased. Christine, what do you make of like a bike? Um, I think that um, learning to ride a bike is one of life's sort of milestones. It's um, 
you know, fantastic resource. I think that what um, this product does over sort of many others really is that um, it doesn't have sort of the stabilizers, it's picking up on children's sort of gross motor skills. And as I think it's already been said by sort of the panelists, um, active, you know, active learning um, is very important and this is a, a very good, good example of that. Keith, what do you think? I love the fact that they look so modern. I think they're so well designed. I think they're very attractive for the children. The opportunities for physical development, um, especially as so many of our children don't seem to walk very much, I mean, they are just going to use their legs for hours and hours on this. But there are no pedals, so in a way mm. they're not learning to ride a bike. Yeah. Is that a problem? I mean, we do still have the, the trikes for children to learn to pedal, but we've reduced the number of big trikes. We've got a lot. And we, we're working now on the theory that if we can then get children from this onto a two-wheel bike with pedals mm. and no stabilisers, we reckon yeah. that we can get children riding two-wheel bikes before they leave nursery. Thank you. Well, okay. let's move on to Julian's third choice of resource for us today, which is the Active World Tray mm -hmm. down here. Julian, explain this resource to us. But what we love about these trays is that um, you can put all sorts of different equipment in them. So we've used them for ice, for example, for cooked spaghetti, for corn flour and water, all sorts of different things. And the children can have really, really good messy play experiences which don't kind of slip off the table and onto the floor and kind of spread even more chaos everywhere <laughs> around them. So it's a very practical resource. You can have it on the floor. We have babies sitting in them. We have children rolling in materials in them, hand foot printing. They're just, it's a very nice piece of practical equipment. But I would just say to people, just get the tray. Don't, don't worry right. about the other bits. But presumably, if, if you did get the accessories and there are different backdrops that you can get, yeah. that could spark off a lot of imaginative play. Well, I would say it would constrain the children's imaginative right, okay. play because you're saying so, to them, hey, guys, today it's Tuesday, so it's dinosaurs. Right. Now, to me, that's restraining their play because they might have all sorts of other ideas and, and, and I really think we do children a disservice by presenting them with these kind of pre-made pictures and resources and, and themes. Well, tray alone then, Christine, would you be a fan <laughs> of that? I'm, yes, I'd be definitely be a fan of the tray. I think it's a, it's a marvellous open-ended resource and can create opportunities for children to work sort of independently, but also working with others. Key, what do you think of the active world? The tray is, I think, are marvellous and not just for early years. Uh, with the accessories that come with it, I think it's like all equipment. It's how you use it. But I think for exploratory type activities, just the tray and whatever you put in it, leave the children to it. Well, thank you all very much. That's all we've got time for today. But just to recap, the three resources that we've looked at are the wooden unit blocks from Community Products UK Limited, the Leica Bike, supplied by Leica Bike, and the Active World Tray, supplied by TTS Group Limited. For more information about the resources we've featured, go to our website. It's teachers.tv forward slash resource review. Or if you want to, email us, resourcereview at teachers.tv. I'd like to say a very big thank you to our panel, to Julian, to Christine and to Keith. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on Resource Review. Bye-bye. <laughs>